Wow. Now you want to access the website? Okay. Where? I want to go to Wi Fi. Where is the site to tell us? Okay. All right. So make that go. I don't need it for the moment. Okay. Thank you so much. Hey, Sydney's here. All right. Oh, look at her. Doubled my numbers for today. Oh, great. Um, there's an HR director of our Richard. Okay, so there was a, a place here to make the lights a little better. Uh, oh, the lights I think are at the left. Yes, sir. All the way over. Okay, all the way at the left. All the way at the left. Oh. That, that left. Is there okay. a mid level light? Can we do like half as bright? Yes, we should do that. I'll buy that. And, and at the moment, <laughs> Oh, so you just hold it and it goes up and down. Yes, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Hello. Okay, so it's the first time we're doing this. So my name is Susan Gerbeck, and thank you so much for showing up. This is really, really great. Um, we're going to be rolling out workshops of this kind all over the United States. We're first. And I've been working with the Center for Inquiry, which is uh, a lot of the swag over here. And it's kind of the biggest skeptical group in, in the United States and, and actually in the world. And they have a huge hub of humanism, skepticism, human rights, a lot of different things you can check out Center for Inquiry. We are recording as long as you don't turn around and look at the camera and say your name and stuff like that. You're pretty private if, if it bothers you. You can see we're kind of very, very just a little bit showing in that. The reason why we're starting it is because I am working with Center for Inquiry. We've decided that during the pandemic, okay, things were a lull, groups weren't meeting in person and so on, but we decided that maybe we should start coming back after the pandemic. It does feel like it's about time to start meeting in person. We're going to have to live with this virus. We're going to have to somehow get through this. Um, but what we decided is, as we went to different places and talked to different people at the different skeptic groups, and I've been all over the United States this year giving talks, and we decided that people, when we were talking to them, they said they were kind of ready for something a little more meaty, instead of just social aspect, going having dinner together and going to, you know, seeing a movie together or something like that, but have, start doing something that's a little more, you know, brain work, something that's a little more like discussion, and that's what we're going to do today. So. We've gone back and forth, Center for Inquiry and I. I've been working as their ambassador for the last couple months. And one of the things that we decided is let's start. So January, I said, all right, we're going to start. I found this room. Great. Isn't this nice? And we're going to start in Salinas. If this works out well, so I'm going to need your feedback. We're going to move on. I've never done this before in my life. All this is brand new. So bear with me. Buttons pushing, that's like easy stuff. I should let you know after this, we're probably going to go have, uh, go eat, go hang out and eat somewhere because social is always important after. I'm thinking Michael's because that's my favorite place in Old Town Selena. So if you want to meet us there and go, please come and go with us. My son endorses that. You know, Her son endorses that. He wants that. us to go there. Oh, <laughs> so I can bring him some food. <laughs> Her son eats so good because every time I go somewhere to eat, she brings something back for him. So we have this place till two. Leslie said she has to be out of here in an hour. So let's get the great content done in the first hour for sure. So the purpose of the workshops, what they wanted to do with Center for Inquiry is they have this idea of doing pre-bunking versus debunking, which is a pre-bunking is kind of a, a new philosophy that is kind of a, when I was at PsyCon in Vegas this last year, everybody was talking about pre-bunking, which is inoculating people against bad ideas, giving them critical thinking skills to come up with in advance so that whenever they encounter something that the multi-level marketing scam, conspiracy theory, you know, something that doesn't sound quite right, that they have kind of the skills to be able to say, wait a minute, that doesn't sound quite right. Let's, you know, where, where do I go with this? So that's the idea of uh, pre-bunking. Debunking is whenever you already have uh, uh, somebody's already fallen into the well of, of uh, magical thinking. And now you're trying to get them out. And that's a lot harder. So it's better to inoculate people against, against bad ideas so that they get an idea of how to get themselves out of it. It's much, it's much more successful. So today's workshop is just the first one. As I said, we're recording this so that, so that other groups can see how this works. We're working out the kinks. 
I'm doing three workshops all on the same day, same place, next Saturday and Saturday after that. They're all on the same theme. You don't have to come to all of them, but they're going to kind of be the same idea where Susan's just making it up as she goes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do today, it's I do lectures all over the world. I'm always lecturing, but this is not a lecture. It's going to be a workshop. So this is going to be about you guys learning something and learning amongst yourself. So we're going to put you guys into groups, probably groups of two. And um, then I need you guys to say stuff and, and, and participate. But we only have this place till four, so we do have to move through. And Mark's always my official timekeeper and tell me. I know. Yeah, he always is. He'll be like, <laughs> move along, move along. Okay. okay, so the article we're going to use, how many people did look at this article? It was Mick West, West's article on, uh, thank you for the, Mark, you, you read it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the article on uh, hair dryers and UFOs. Crap. So I was on our little workshop that's supposed to be your homework, but that's okay. So we're going to use that as a case study. I felt that it was nice and safe. It was kind of like, nobody believes this probably in this room. You guys don't think that UFOs are coming here and leaving burning on people, right? Uh, that is yeah. correct. Probably not. That is okay. a correct statement. <laughs> yeah, okay. Change my mind. <laughs> Change your mind right now, dude. Okay. <laughs> we're going to do that right now. Okay, so the first thing when we're discussing any kind, okay, so you've encountered a, a friend or a coworker, or a family member, or somebody stranger who saw your shirt and said, wow, that's really interesting. What does that mean? And then you have a conversation with them. There's two things to really consider. The first one is, number one, is this person an immediate harm for this belief? Okay. So I want you guys to give me some examples of what you think that somebody would be satisfied. Number one, are they in harm of danger right now this moment for the belief that they have that is a magical thinking kind of belief give me some ideas like some of the pseudo medicine where it's like oh you can inject like you know bleach enema to cure aids or whatever right bleach would be high up there on my list of things that might be dangerous right i'm going from oh really i'm going for my bleach injection right now for my... <laughs> Did you do that well he was trying to do yeah. you had one leslie yeah, I mean, I was going to say QAnon. I don't know if they'd be an immediate, an immediate, like. I'm um, going to the Capitol right now. Oh, yeah. That might be immediate, like, not a good idea. <laughs> no, the guy you want to shoot people in a pizza restaurant. Because just oh, yeah, pizza wow. restaurant. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I should yeah. let you guys know that there are microphones above you, which is really good. So it's supposed to be picking you guys up, which is great. I hope. I hope. What about financial harm like they're about to spend a bunch of money for some malarkey like uh you know a year's supply of psychic readings or something like that i would say that's kind of immediate mark romance scams oh god yeah. oh romance scams. somebody you somebody's like i've just i've just met this guy he's amazing he's so awesome he wants me to send him uh, credit card numbers or something like that. He's, he's a soldier. Trouble. He's a soldier overseas and he just can't. Yeah. So gift cards. Gift cards. Oh, you know, did you read that article Wendy wrote about romance scams? Just came out recently. Oh my gosh. She got busted. She got caught up in it. It's really sad. Um, so yeah, those are immediate things. Okay. So those are like the person you're talking to right now. This is an immediate red alert, red flag. I've got to intervene. Okay. This what we're going to talk about today are not the red flags. Story of what it is they believe. The first thing you say to yourself is, "This is an immediate harm." I mean, is it like crystal healing, or you know, I'm going to have my chakras cleaned or something like that? You're like, okay, well, that's kind of benign. Yeah, magical thinking in the long run, it might be a problem, but right now, today, they're okay. The second thing, you can't see it very well. Number two is how much time do I have? So is this a situation where you have a person who is in a long-term relationship with you, a family member, a coworker, somebody you're going to see often. And that way you can have a conversation with them in a different way. Like you're going to start off with a conversation, the question things, and you're going to start off with it. And then you have, you know, you're going to see them the next day. Like, oh, maybe I'll read that article you gave me and I'll talk to you about it tomorrow at work. Or is this a person that you're in an elevator and you're going from four or five down to the lobby? And like I said, they saw your shirt and it says something 
like homeopathy is a scam. And they say, you know, I use homeopathy. You have five floors to make some kind of statement to them that's going to make them think. And that's all you've got. They walk out, they walk out of your life and that's the last you see them. So you have to consider how much time you have with a person that you want to talk to. Okay, so those are the first two things that are gonna work on. You have to think about whenever you're about to have a conversation, it's kind of a difficult conversation with somebody. How much time do you have and how much how it is is immediate because you're gonna change your whole trajectory of what you say. Okay, so we're gonna break out into groups. So I think, Two groups of four each, right? So however you guys want to do it, form a group of four. And we're going to have just like a How few about minutes. Two threes? I don't care. No, just get in a group. Come on, move. It's okay. <laughs> Nobody's going to hurt you. It's all right. So group one, <laughs> raise your hand, group one. Okay, there you go. Group one, there you go. Cool group video. one. Mark, come over here with this group two. Okay. Group one, you're coming up with do's. What do you say to somebody? That is positive. We're going to continue the conversation. That is that is okay. Group two, your activity is what are the don'ts? What are the things you do not say to somebody unless you want to end the conversation right now? And that's that's the end. They're not going to even talk to you again. So talk amongst yourselves, and then somebody's going to come up and write. Wait, what was the word? Did you like, get that? Huh? What would yeah. you not say? Well, you're not. You're separate. an idiot. <laughs> so talking about basically <laughs> anything I would say. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I have ever. Yeah. yeah. My son and I actually talked about small. Well, I don't know how it goes. My son and I. Yes. I, I, I we both agree that I, I would I, not be the person to talk at all. You were going to be the one of We're talking about that. That's the thing. Yeah. Can you reveal? I don't. Honestly, say so. I have to. Yeah. Yeah. All these times, then maybe something like you're saying. Right. Okay. Oh, tell me about that. Yeah, like like someone like, who's like, 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 like for example, like oh I like, like, a little bucket. And you go like but, what? Oh <laughs> what do you uh, say? What do you not say? You don't say, yeah. well, you know that's not been proven, or you know that's not really like, free well, money. Not or, ask them, so. Oh, what's in the pocket? Not that familiar with the I, I know. In, in other words, it's, a lot of, like, like, it's, it's uh, not actually as good as it has been a lot of plants. Like so you could, that would probably be a good thing to do is but, ask questions. I think like this. Yeah, because that's I get that. No, you it is out there. there. And I you know, yeah. heard about it, but, but like, now I've heard some disclaimer. Yeah. I guess like half time too. They are to uh, use certain things in lieu of grown medicine. Doing and what, like, you know, what, right. what, what that would be yourself and hold on. Oh, yeah, you can say, what's in the And what is that? What's that? And it actually says, I'm not working for you. That's interesting. How's that working for you? What do you call a traditional medicine that works? That was not a But, but, yeah, so. I would say I'm going to tell more about it because I wouldn't know what to say to them about that. Well, actually, and I'm why I do I, I just know that it's a, a yeah, kind I of a belief. Yeah, right. Real medicine, so, so I don't have the detail. What is, that that you, what is something that you, what is something that you know people believe that you know? Yes. Because I like clothes with people that are okay. Truth. Okay. I'm just going to tell you this story. My dad's wife, uh, Ray, and by the way, Chris, to be there. I was there with, well, my brother in law and my sister were also there. And she was just telling us how there was this really sick person on his airplane. I was glad she was single. And I forgot the details, but um, according to her, I, was, I got in every day. That's hilarious. Oh, no, it was not. My brother in law was talking to her about that and he just you know, gently pointed out to her that yeah, this wasn't any kind of supernatural yeah. interference from God. Yeah, oh, so she was crediting God with having the person have a miraculous recovery. Yeah, well, so. on the flight before you got problem at the hooking, I think that might have been a doctor on board. Right. right. So if someone was able to do so if, if someone said to you then. And so that like, if you have a long time, like, God yeah, cured my or, cancer. What evidence they have, right? Or, yeah. well, I mean, obviously, I would probably wouldn't argue with more shorter or oh, less just as a nice person. But if they were saying, just to, 
yeah, what, they were going to go to take spiritual to because they heard that their friend blah 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 blah, blah. If there was and this is kind of a it's not an immediate harm but it's definitely would, harm would how would you talk that? to them so they didn't so they just didn't solidify their position or what would you not say to them if you <laughs> okay wrap it up we're gonna go we're gonna have i need a volunteer from each group and oh, you're right who wants to report on our group or the not i'll do it that's okay. fine <laughs> right <laughs> Oh, I gotta do do group and don't do group. I need a right volunteer from each. Uh, okay, I'll be I'll be do. She's gonna do. Go do. do. Go do. You get the chin. Purple or black? Oh, purple. Okay, so all right. Oh, what are our Let's get your things down here. Uh, some of the key things that you came up with that are do. I think we came up with. What are definitely do? Don't, don't, don't people don't. being stupid, baby. Or don't laugh at them. Well, listen. listen. Well, that's a do. Okay, come here, don't. Mm -hmm. Who's in the don't pile? Well, Never volunteer. Really don't. I like how she did that. You're in the don't. Yeah. So give us some keywords for don'ts. What's up with the, uh, the blackboard? I don't know. It's not black for one thing. <laughs> it's oh, a, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I think it's a marker. The markers are just. They're just fading. Yeah. They don't, so you can wipe it off. Probably. Oh, well, if you use the real marker, like don't. Well, yeah, those are whiteboard yeah, markers. They wouldn't come off. I can't. Um, oh, you'll be judged if you don't spell it correctly. Look at my notes. This is the first time I've done this. <laughs> what, what did I forget? Did I forget something? Uh, like, ask them to expand on what their what their beliefs are. He's gonna get the reading glasses for Dover's side. <laughs> it's so small. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to laugh at you. <laughs> That's a rude thing to do. Be, be, laugh be friendly. Be friendly. Or be friendly. Oh, oh yeah, be friendly. <laughs> <laughs> There are some people I've met in the world that are probably very bad at, like Deborah was saying, not really the person you volunteer to go up on the thank you so much, you guys. Um, so we have here in the do column, they would say, that's interesting. Ask about their history and the belief. Ask about their confidence level and the belief. That's good. I've not thought of that. That's a really good one. Ask them to expand on their belief, be friendly and interested. Okay. Versus, don't laugh at them. Don't say you're an idiot. <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> you are wrong. So very good. Good. You guys got the right idea. Some of the things um, on the the workshop uh, discussion thing, I said there. I put up some skeptoid uh, skeptoid Brian Dunning. He has a podcast. I put up a, a, a two articles he's written. And one of them is about how to be a skeptic and, and continue having friendship. <laughs> <laughs> and I have the links on the website. Know. Yeah. And so, so some of the things he starts out with focus on what you agree with. Uh, uh, never where you disagree. So you want to focus on what you agree on, not what you disagree on. So start by finding a common ground. So maybe have them you know, you're talking about some kind of story or myth that they've heard. You say, you know, that reminds me I've had, and you start telling, talking about a myth that is just way out there so much that you're sure that the person does not believe in. You can use the hairdryer one if you want in the UFOs, if you really want to. So <laughs> then you can kind of talk about that, the common reasons and apply it to the story and they're telling him. So another thing they did, he says, is to Try to avoid words that are sciencey. Don't try to go fall into that's a straw man. That's a logical fallacy of this kind. Don't don't do that. Nobody's going to listen to you after that. <laughs> also, <laughs> don't belittle the source because the person who's 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 telling you the story believes the source. So if you come in right away and say, "Oh, that's a bunch of BS," 
the person's going, you haven't even looked at it. And you're, yeah, obviously you have it. And then you're really diminishing them because you're saying, not only do I find you an idiot, but the thing that you watched is so stupid that I can't believe, you know, you're, that's what they're thinking you're saying. And it just shuts down the entire conversation. So if you can't see the video or whatever it is they gave you, you know, have them try to explain it to you in a way so that you really can understand it. And then if you have the time, remember if you're on here and you have some time, Go and read their source, watch the video, do what you have to do. They watched it. See if you can figure out where the fallacy is or where they're falling into it. And when we get into this UFO thing, I think you'll make it, it'll make more sense. Avoid negative language, um, avoid saying anybody is wrong and pick your battles. The last thing I think I remember him talking about is that you should do is to, um, uh, you know, find a common way of having a language because a lot of the language in the paranormal world is the same words we're using, but they mean something different. Does anybody ever know any words that mean something totally different to a person who's into magical thinking versus somebody who's into critical thinking? Energy, oh. right? Like energy, they say, but it's energy, man. It's the energy, it's the energy, the vibrations of the world. Okay, we think of vibrations and energy kind of in a different way than probably somebody else. Any other words you guys can think of that are those kind of words? Cosmos. Cosmos. Quantum. Vibration. Quantum. <laughs> vibration. Yeah, quantum. That gets over oh, quantum. Yeah. Theory. Oh, yeah. They think of theory and theory or the, the scientists are arguing amongst themselves. Well, no, that's not that's how science is done. We talk to, you know. The other one that's a big one is um, <laughs> evidence. They think evidence means Google. Oh, <laughs> research. Your opinion. Research. Yeah. I, did research. Told me. Yeah. I did my research. I did my research. Dr. Google. And then to somebody who's on the more of the uh, skeptical side or the critical thinking side uses those words in a different way. So Brian Dunning says in his, in his articles I've, uh, that we should probably think about how we use those words and define them with them. So have them say what energy is. Well, what do you mean by energy? Uh, what do you mean by cosmos? What do you mean by vibration? What do you mean by evidence? What kind of evidence would it take? You know, So kind of try to get some kind of common uh, verbiage amongst you and them. Because you know, if you're not even talking on the same, if, you, if the vocabulary means completely different things to them than it does to you, you're co totally talking at cross purposes and it's an awful argument, an awful discussion. You're going to have nothing but problems. So try to define your terms. Try to use ways of saying, like, if you find out that the person, like with this UFO thing that I'm going to show you and the hair dryers, <laughs> they say, well, that's ridiculous. Of course, you know, that's not aliens. That's so stupid. Aliens are when they come here and they don't. <laughs> 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 I mean, hair dryer marks on you. <laughs> but I mean, if you could do that, you could say, so that does sound ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous to me, but some people believe it. What kind of evidence do you think that person would have to have to make somebody believe it? And they go, well, I guess they'd have to be able to show, you know, and then so you can kind of have sort more of a conversation with them about how better to, you know, you're starting to come up with more words, you're in agreement. Oh, that's true. You know, you have these conversations, and then you can kind of maybe get into their area a little bit, pushing a little bit, at least to enough that they'll start questioning. And my big thing is always find a way of allowing them to save face. That is so important. Nobody wants to go. I'm an idiot. You're right. I am an idiot. How did I, you know, of course not. <laughs> so you have to, they're just going to keep doubling you down and digging the hole a little bit further. So you have to find a way of saying, so I, I know that you saw through that, right? You know, kind of, oh well, yeah, I was, I was kind of skeptical about it, you know, so find a way of making it so that they come up with the solution. They have the idea, you know, I was doing some research and I kind of did figure this out you know I'm not such an idiot as you think so try to make it so that they have the the aha moment not you give them the aha moment so I don't know if that translates well but that's what I how I look at it people don't want to feel like I mean how many people do you know said you're right I believed in aliens and I'm absolutely an idiot and, you know nobody does that they they say I did my research and now I'm starting to understand what these people are just trying to sell me something right Okay, so we're going to go to one more thing here real quick. And this is getting into the aliens. Can I know I you guys one, one thing? Sure. <clears throat> On the do list, uh, 
one of the most important things I learned when I was working as a professional psychic, you'll excuse me, <clears throat> was listen, listen, listen. Oh yeah, very well. If you just listen until you can't stand it anymore, <laughs> and then you tiptoe and put one toe in at a time, you'll have a lot more to work with. Because the tendency with most professional skeptics is they jump in at the first sentence and they they cut themselves off from information that they might be able to use later, which is what a psychic does. Okay. That's yeah. good. Thank yeah. you for yeah, it's a good um it's a good part. But give me a segue yes. to be able to figure this out. Uh, when I was a kid, I was told listen. Yeah, listen. if their parents told them about it, then be very careful. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so somebody have a good idea of how I'm supposed to get to to uh, making the screen show the show the what I want to show you something a video yeah you gotta lower the screen more for one thing. okay so I'm gonna lower the video the screen <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh I should screen okay that makes sense but what the heck is this, this is the one I asked don't put yeah, your I, red so I've got to be in the front <laughs> of my family a few months ago she oh this is an ad just bringing up that she wonder if they're uh, Okay, here we go. Yeah. So I'm going to share screen. Okay, so I probably should read each other. Susan knew it already. Thank yeah. you. Oh my gosh, I'm not She already knew it. It was just one of those ads. Oh, well, because at my house, I don't have ads on my YouTube. Yeah. So whenever they appear, you're like, what is this? What is this thing? Why is there an ad in here? Among that many people. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, and this is going to be our case study throughout today, the whole hours and hours we should be here. They, they would. But you know, buddy. Yes. 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 <laughs> I can show my hair. It's hard to keep up with all the things. Yeah. Okay, okay, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> so that's for afterwards when we go eat. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with this case study, and this is this is an article written by a, a great friend of ours named Nick West, and he has a really wonderful book out that is called uh, "Escape from the Rabbit Hole," I believe. And this is he he's an expert on UFOs, on uh, contrails, on um, those kinds of things, and he's done a lot of interviews of people who are in the rabbit hole deep and how they got themselves out what gets them into the rabbit hole and so on. It's a really good book, Escape from the Rabbit Hole. He has a podcast too, um, Mick West. So the article we're going to look at is uh, hopefully some of you read, and it is about, he found out that there's a group of people that believe that UFOs are here and they're tagging mostly women, that's important, with circles on their bodies, the burn marks. So I want you to imagine or cross hairs. cross hairs, whatever. I want you to imagine that your friend, that this is somebody, <clears throat> this is not immediate danger. They're not in immediate danger. And you have a little time with them has told you this story. Okay. So if I'm going to play, I think I'm just maybe a minute of this video. And this is, I want you to pretend they've told you this. Now you don't know anything about aliens and, and hair dryers. This is just the story they told you. So if where's the shirt screen? See, that's the thing. Where's the where's the bottom, bottom green? The green one. Oh, see, right that's my middle here. So maybe, maybe I'll give this to Karen because she's so good at zoom now. But it's only if this is talking to your laptop. Okay, so I'm supposed oh, to. Yeah, then. Oh yeah, okay. Go to share screen. And Go to, yeah, it's just good. And go up there. Is, is that the screen? No, no. So you're, you want on your laptop, this, the YouTube video, you want that to be in the front. No. Okay, it is. I don't see it. Yeah, it I don't would think it's be under a screen, of wouldn't it? He said something about pushing a button over here too. Let's try that and see what happens. Yeah, you don't want this screen. Out. Is this screen on your laptop? That's no. on Zoom. The Zoom? That's the Zoom. But you want to go. This only works if the minimize Zoom. that screen. There it is. Then input. Then the, yeah, yeah, then you go pull up that screen you want. <clears throat> Uh-oh. So minimize that. Then pull up the screen you want. Video clicking. Okay. 
And then you're gonna go scare. Then once you get your video clip on your laptop, yeah, you need it. You need. Then you're gonna go to share screen. But you gotta minimize that screen first, so you see. Minimize. Yeah, we're looking at a video of a video. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, there it is. Hey, Ben. Uh, okay. Then you want to go back to Zoom and go to get share Okay. Okay. So, so now okay. this is responding just to your laptop and not to this. Okay. So make that. Can so you, that means you got to go back to your laptop. On your laptop. And then hit share screen on Zoom. So step so number one when putting on one of these oh. things is make sure you touch it everything. Video. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch just a few seconds of this. I think I've got it down for um, 30 seconds. So let me put it to the right place. This is a lecture that was given as part of a lecture, actually. And okay. Wait, you didn't start it. I know. No, she's getting to the this right. side. Yeah. I want you to ignore because this is the side we're going to do in the second part of this lecture. This is all you know, and I don't know. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is your friend, right? Who you respect. Practice not rolling your eyes, right? I already lost. <laughs> you already rolled your eyes. <laughs> okay, let's see. Hopefully, the sound will roll. I had to unroll it so I could drive. <laughs> I don't hear anything. It's not playing, is it? No. Check, it's playing. Check the soundy thing. No, at the right. It. The it says it's playing, but it's not. There's no sound. Right. So see if it's turned up. Though. When she shared screen, she hit sound. Yeah. Oh, uh, right. But the, but there are two separate things. The Zoom is is not connected to your laptop, so the sound. Oh, okay. So then should I try? Okay, I'm hitting play, so you should be hearing somebody making words. No, what you could also do if you want is hit the CC and just have the. Oh, the guy's voice is so great. Okay. Yeah, but if you have suggestions from anybody in the. Well, your laptop has to be connected to the sound system here. It's got the HDMI in. Here's a lot. Here's this game. You want to push buttons on that and see if anything happens. You change your you can tell if it's working. Inputs. Inputs? Um, because you said there, there's a cable over there. Yes, it's on. H HDMI cable? Yeah. Well, so then it should feed directly to the projector. It would seem like we just hear it so if you on your it up, laptop. If you bring it up uh, yeah. on your laptop. Yeah. Okay, we'll just try a second longer. If it doesn't, we'll just go with it. It just is so cool to see this guy talking. Okay, so he's not all right. So we'll just go with you. we'll be in as we do. All right, thank you for trying. So it was he was describing it in his voice. It's French and it's just a nice, <laughs> nice voice. So away. here's what it is: is your friend has come up to you, and you're like, "So what's new?" And they say, "Well, I noticed that I have this burn mark on me. I have a burn mark on me. I don't know how I got it." It's really weird. I didn't burn myself. I'm kind of wondering what it might be. All right. So that's all you kind of know. And you know that the person you're talking to is one of those kind of people who could go there with UFOs. Okay. They're not saying it yet, but that's how they are. So they notice this mark. It's on her hip. It fades in about a week. Okay. You got breaking your grips really quick. Pop. How are you going to talk to your friend? Okay. Oh, well, turn around, talk to each other about this. You got your friend who's talking to you about this. What are you going to do? I'm going to laugh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know anything about hair dryers. You don't know that. You don't know anything about hair dryers. So she wants to show sometimes. No, she has. She didn't get to see that. She already showed you a picture of it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. They'd be like, wow, that's really hard bad. Uh, she thought describing it. why do you think she so, so that's why I was saying can we just have yeah. 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 so yeah. so a yeah. 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 so yeah. yeah. Susan, are, have they gone and talked about aliens yet? Or are they just talking about the person? You just know that the person you're talking to has that kind of mindset. Okay. They tend to go back to like I got the thing on my no. Yeah, I got the thing Oh yeah. Ah, maybe we'll uh, they showed you a picture of that burn mark right there. Oh my gosh! Oh, 
<laughs> they could go. No rolling of your eyes. Oh, wonderful use of humor. It's not a wonderful use of humor. You know, Archer like about my work. Archer's quite a job. Archer's melted in. But I know. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like, like somebody drew on you. Is that what they're kids? That's what I was thinking. I didn't realize. Fence it. It looks like a burning yeah. part. Did you go so what would you ask them? Yeah. Rather than what you would and tell them. But if you ask them. I would just bring your own large. Right. But that's that's still telling us something. What would you ask? Yeah, but have you seen the doctor? My doctor. I think you need to go to the doctor. Well, I, I would, I would but I wouldn't tell him I'm not going to go there. I would just say, yeah. Or that's strange. How long is it been there? This is like, figure you're probably happen. Right. Somewhere. And I would just keep more grounded in reality. Oh, yeah. How good. But how do you do that? I would that? say, what so is it? Yeah. Yeah. And they think it's still there. Maybe I'm trying to idea. It's always a good starting point. Spiders. They said spiders. And you're like, Spider. <laughs> okay, so what's more like? Let's go back. To, let's go back. To so I want to hear some takeaways. What back here in group one? What did you guys come up with? Uh, just oh, go ahead. Just like go like oh, express concern <laughs> and, as you should, That's and funny. go like uh, suggest rational causes. Like go like oh, and, um, you know, I sometimes get cuts randomly too. Remember, maybe if it's there in a week, you should go see the doctor. Or, oh, how'd well, you do that? How'd you, yeah. how'd you do that? So just plant the seed, like something you, you did. You did. Yeah. Just something normal. So, yeah. so oh, what if she already that? knows? What if she already knows wh where she's gone? You know, she she's already in a place of UFOs, but she's <laughs> not ready to, to say that. Well, we're gonna get to that in a second. So all you do is ask her what you know. What do you can do? And that opens the door. Maybe ask them, okay, so you don't really know what caused it. What sort of thing could cause it? You know, is that, it, would it be something really hot? Would it be something really cold? Is it ink? Did somebody draw on you? Did you have to give a child? That's what she said, too. It's a big draw. I mean, I had to put my stashes on my kids when they were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Who has this? Okay. <laughs> and then photograph them. Okay. So good, good. Okay, so you're on the right track. So now your friend is like, okay, ready to share now. You've gotten that far with them. Now they're ready to share the weird, okay? So your friend now tells you, hey, well, I did see this. I was trying to figure out what it was, and I found this video. And there's this guy. He's an expert. He has a PhD. He has a French accent. It's really sexy sound, you know, whatever it is they say, the reasons why they believe it. But they saw this video, and other people have reported these burn marks, Okay. So since I can't show it to you all, act it out. We'll go through it. So here's some of the things that I'm doing. He's talking about this. It's a case study. He says. And he's saying that the witness contacted him. She'd been driving with her daughter and another girl in the backseat of the car. And she saw as a bright light. She also He also mentions that she was a very uh, reliable witness. And she has, you know, she's a business person. No nonsense, like, you know, arguments from authority kind of thing. And she noticed she had a car with a sunroof. She noticed this very big gray disc flowing over her car, low over the car. So she handed the kids in the back her cell phone <coughs> and said, I'm driving. Why don't you take a picture of that? Okay. So this is what this case study is. Let me go to the next part. And I will tell you what he says. Oh, here he is. Here's the dude. And he looks very... Doesn't he look very uh, um, serious and scholarly? Yeah, scholarly. I believe him. Yeah. Like I mean, Lewis. just an astrophysics. <laughs> <laughs> he does have that kind of vibe to him, doesn't he? He looks a little like he would be authoritative. He's on the stage. Yeah. Somebody must have given him something like this. He's got the white hair. He's, He's got, got white hair. Must be educated. I love this. This is really good. I like this. This part. Yeah. So we're learning that these people can look authoritative uh, just from being on just from being on the stage already gives you a bit of credibility about it. There's a whole bunch of people there. He's at the <laughs> contact in the desert. He's giving a lecture at this conference. It's a UFO Vegas? Conference. I don't know. It might probably be. At, at the probably. Mexico. So here is what your friend has found in this video. That these patterns are all over the world. Okay. Mostly, but not always by women. And they don't, they disappear in one to two weeks and they don't seem to have any negative health effects. 
a big question is how did these women burn themselves? I'm not even remember that. That's a great the hair question. dryer touched them and they got absolutely the great question. Has anybody ever dried their hair and and burned themselves with a curling iron and or just be forgot about it? I just forget about no, it. No, I burned myself with a curling iron one time. I didn't even know it. And then a few days later I noticed this mark right there. And I couldn't remember doing anything. And so I even asked my doctor about it. <laughs> and if like, it hadn't been this, no, if yeah. it had been look like this, no. and you believed in aliens, yeah. you could be one of those people, Deborah. I don't know. But it didn't look like that, right? No, no, it was just a little spot because it, it was a curling iron. What did but your doctor say? He goes, he, goes, he didn't know anything. He took a little thing and he goes, oh, it's a burn. Did you burn yourself? And I'm like, I, can't, I don't remember doing it, but I must have. I was in a hurry or something. You know, right. Like, Anybody else ever been burned by a curling iron or a yeah, Karen? On, on my neck. Very embarrassing. And then it looks like a hickey. Huh? Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? Ew. Alien hickey. But you do, you're just kind of, it's a routine at that time. I, you know, I was much younger. I'm mean, curling my hair like every day. So it's just like a routine thing. Like you just keep going. That, that's, you know, I mean, I didn't pay much attention to it. And then you see this thing there. Did you feel it? Yeah. Now, you know, I mean, once I saw the result, and then I remembered I felt it. But at the time, I just, you just keep going. It's like a routine, brushing your teeth, curling your hair, you know, you just yeah. kind of got lost. In it's all like that. stubbing your toe or something. You just keep going. Yeah. Back. Yeah. You go, oh, damn. Then if you're days later, you're like, why is my toe sore? Yeah. yeah. Why is my toe so acting? Exactly. So this is exactly what Cindy said is what people on the audio, because people bring it up to him. The guy says later in the video, uh, you know, about four minutes in, he says, somebody mentioned that it could be hair dryers. And, and uh, Mick West, who's watching this video, goes, there's the answer, hair dryers. And he, and he stopped, Mick stopped in the article and said, okay, well, we got the answer, let's move on. But the thing is, the guy gives a whole bunch more criticism. He said, well, it, People say it's hair dryers, but it doesn't match hair dryers because hair dryers are all different. And that doesn't, and that, no, it, it doesn't look like yeah. a standard hair dryer. So he just immediately makes the assumption it can't be a hair dryer because hair dryers, I, I don't know if he thinks they're standard or what. He totally time. dismisses it. Totally misses the answer. And also the thing about you're mostly women. Why would you even mention that? Because it is mostly women. But he probably has a couple people who are male that have used a hair dryer for something. And then he also um not he does the same thing Cindy said is that people think that you would feel it. And I brought my hair dryer and I'm not asking for a volunteer to come up here. I know I'm not gonna burn myself, but if you look at the top of these things, it's just a grid. Now, this one mine doesn't have a circle. It's got just the lines on lines it. like that too. They're just straight lines. I wonder if they kind of gotten better at this over the years that that you know they're they're making it so maybe this is farther out or something. Mm -hmm. I know I've burned myself and I know I've gotten the curling iron burned because I don't curl my hair very often with a curling iron back in the day, especially. And so you just fumble with it and you hit your head and there'd be a burn right here. I remember having a scab at one point up there. Yeah, I thought, well, that was stupid. On the edges of my ears. Oh yeah, back in the ears. <laughs> so this is this is the thing that happens. And you just, it's like it, uh, Mick West in the article, he describes it as just, it's like touching a burn on the stove. It's that fast. It's like, and you go, oh, that was stupid. And nothing appears in your fingers right away. And then you walk away, you go about your day. And then maybe a day or so later, you notice, gosh, my fingers are tender. You don't really put two and two together necessarily. And people think that if you burn yourself, you will immediately get the burn mark and you will you will go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, <laughs> screaming, screaming. No, it, it's it's actually a phenomenon where they you burn and it's gone. And then it takes a day or so and the welt starts developing. You know, it, it shows up. And these patterns of these hair dryers, look at that. There's so many different kinds. The other thing the guy says, Jacques, Jacques Vallée. And can I say, mention yeah. who he is? Oh, you know this guy? Know is? No, 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 no. Is he the guy that takes the car and back and parks it? The what? <laughs> what? The what? The what? The ballet. No, 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 no. Uh, no he, if you ever saw the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which I'm sure most of us have seen, oh, yeah. the guy who uh, Truffaut Keep played. Out. Just ignore this part. What's that? There's a thing on no, the right. Keep that. Like, <laughs> Truffaut, oh, the yeah. actor, played the French-speaking 
uh, scientist who was in uh, in the movie, and that was Jacques Vallée. Oh, because, that was to be him, huh? Yeah, yeah. Because he was oh, been he been there that. for a long time. As a nutty scientist. What's that? As a nutty scientist. No, he wasn't a nutty scientist. He was a serious French astrophysicist. And that, so they ooh. made his part a little more serious. So, so that more he has been yeah. down the rabbit hole. His whole life. He's probably. Yeah, I mean, Don't he wrote, there. <clears throat> forget the name of the book, but he wrote a book that got him written into that script. But I don't remember what it is like. Yeah. There are people that are like really high in expertise in one particular area, PhDs and everything. And then they believe some other kind of weird stuff that they, they you know. Well, yeah. Like, no, I don't. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have time shirt turned out to be using empty. All right, we're on schedule. I gotta go. Oh no. I'm sorry. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Well, we're gonna to put the video out somewhere. So she's leaving not because of anything I said, and she's gonna go, she's gonna go do the tap. She's gonna go burn herself with a hair. That's right. No, 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 no. I'll let you guys know her four back. Okay, let us know how long it takes for the burn to show. Do I have my keys? Oh yeah, I have my keys. Okay, yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. 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 See you again. Okay, so what else happens is this guy starts talking about, he says, the thing about this particular person in this case study that he has is that this woman is telling him the story, but all the other stories he's heard about these burn marks don't have a UFO element, but this one does. She saw something in the sky and she had her kid take a picture of it. And this is a photograph. Let me show you, it's a little white, there's a white angle photograph of this. So imagine your friend's telling you these stories and said, yeah, there was this, there was this, um, so this guy in this video, he starts talking about how there was a, here, here it is, no, oh, darn it. This was to a, through a sunroof in the closet. Apparently. It's like an out of focus snowflake. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so let's, let's let it play. The first picture he shows is the first picture and that, that he shared with them. And then he zooms in on it, like that's gonna make it more important. And then, so any moment now, I don't have a mouse, so it's weird. Yeah, he says it, that she said it was a disc. And then, and it was, yeah, like a large disc, and like a little car that is. And it clearly and it's it's has, yeah. You can press the, the left arrow. Oh, right. oh that's mm -hmm. probably do it. Okay, so look at that thing. Mm -hmm. So he's he's equating that it is a that this woman is being followed around by a large disc in the sky, and she's been burned by this UFO thing. And she's got these burns, and he's equating the two, right? He's saying that that has something to do with it. Another thing he mentions on the video is he says that. People who have these burn marks, mostly women, he was saying that maybe an alien saw them on the street and pointed a laser at them and put the burn on them. Oh, but it couldn't be. <laughs> Practice your good. I do all the wrong, the, all the jokes. I do all the bad. <laughs> and so what happens is that they just, they said, no, that can't be because sometimes the burn marks appear in places where the skin isn't covered. And the alien, I don't know why it couldn't go through the clothing, but it, it, okay, so so he's saying these <laughs> kinds of things happen. So he's thinking to himself, so this Jacques guy is like, but the picture I received is not a large dome full flying over her car. So if, what's going on? The kids it took a picture. It shot through the sunroof of the car. What they could be something that's on the glass of the sunroof. It's on the glass. It's the it's the following them. It's yeah. kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> Some kid put a sticker on the car of a star. I don't know. It's a rental car, too. It is a rental car, yeah. It's a rental car. car. So she's not familiar with what objects yeah, look it, like. They did it up with a glass. Could have been some like debris, plant debris, or something that's stuck on the glass. Or if you rock. open up the glass, that would be different. Or then or you a, have to wear a, a, a flatter from a bird group. Or, or a rock? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty Notch in the glass. <laughs> Well, well, they were just they happened to get the splatter just right. They, they suggested it might be a drone, but he dismissed that too. It could be a drone, but I think it could be very well. But it's probably not a UFO, right? <laughs> well, so I just don't see how I can draw the conclusion between the two like that. Well, and it's why. Not why is it that he can do that? Why is it that he can draw the conclusion between the burn mark and the drone? Because he wants to sell another book. That's <laughs> <what I'm gonna laughs> I, I think Mark's right. 
<laughs> because he wants to find the correlation. Yeah. If you want to find a correlation, you can find correlation. So that's, that's what it is. From God. The sign from God. So I only made it 20 minutes into this. Deborah, you didn't watch the whole thing, did you? No, I had it on while I was getting dressed. I saw I listened to some of it. But I'm trying to remember. Is there anything else really is relevant? It's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, it's on our it's on it's on our meetup. Uh, for the instructions for coming here. But, yeah, I, he says it's a close encounter. That doesn't qualify as a close encounter. So all of the information I'm giving you is right here on MontereyCountySkeptics.com. It's what? It's maybe a distant encounter if you believe what it is. Well, isn't there like a, a number system? Like third kind is face to face. And I think first kind is like seeing the ship. Right. I don't, I don't know. Two and a half is a hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> So it so the find these links, you go to MontereyCountySkeptics.org and you scroll down and you see where it says info here. And then here's where the workshop are right here. And then if you go down further, you will see. And Deborah said, I, it, I didn't make it clear that you had to keep going down further. Here's the video right here. If you want to watch it, this is the case study. This is the, the, the article by um, Nick yeah. West. And these are the two articles here about skeptoid articles, uh, one and two, about how to ha how to have friends and still be a skeptic. And this right here is Metabunk, which is the site that McWest runs. And he crowdsourced it and said, has anybody else heard of this? And they went and did all the research and, and came up with this Jacques guy and all the other videos. And this is another article that you can read that we were supposed to start with. So now we're gonna, we're gonna keep going with this for a second because now your friend has told you all this, right? So now I want you to get into your little great breakout groups and I want you to discuss now that your friend has told you these little things. I saw this really great video and in this video, this guy who has authority, he's got gray hair, he's on the stage, he's been in close encounters, he's an astrophysicist. No, he's not in close encounters. Okay, well, whatever. She and he's French. And he's French and he's got this great accent. With gray hair. Gray hair. Shirt and all this stuff. Yeah, he's really famous. Some movie, something about close encounters. And does it, he's, a, he's an astrophysicist. He's got a PhD. I don't know about that. Okay, yeah. well, she's remembering it wrong. See, they're telling you the yeah, story. And when they relate it to you, it's not what they heard. It's what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. So get in your little groups. Mm -hmm. And I want you to talk about what yeah. you're going to say to your friend now that you've heard this conversation with them. Yeah, he was saying he was, wasn't here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you believe that? Sure. <laughs> right. Right. Use, your dues. Use your dues now. You want to have a conversation? So you're going to be affected by a baby. Oh, 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 I get it. Oh, uh, yeah. the tragedy is going to go away. Okay, so where yeah. did they say that? No, in the, in the, in the uh, they've YouTube. seen the video. He talks right. about one person. They figured out what it is. That is where it was not on the surface like the skin, and they were thinking, okay, it wasn't it was the first. Was so where was it now? Uh, yeah. oh, it was, well, remember, you haven't was... watched this video. You're only having it about it from you. Oh, my boy, it's got to be one or the other. So it has a. And you sent me the video. Yeah. Well, they can yeah. see it, like yeah. a tattoo below oh, the skin. Yeah. So, but then yeah. like a tattoo, yeah. 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 yeah, and if you Pop put it somehow yeah. under, yeah. like a brand new, yeah. yeah, well, that would be a scar. Yeah, that would be a scar, but yeah. So this is helping tell me more. Said, wasn't about a tattoo? Or, I mean, it's like, okay, let's say, right. Tell me more. In order to leave space for what, what, what what's the mark? Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. Anybody got a match at all? He has a. Yeah, it might snap off. No, it's not like a fire. It's like a time really base. Well, I guess. You're going to try to be in the backwards for a kid. There's a little get here. No, I was going to try to work that out. We're going to get something to eat, I'm sure. Didn't they make a mark that only they can see? Right. 
They just you? packed us with you. Oh, I'm sorry, Madam. Okay, Jean, uh, uh, tell me more. Well, I uh, can send it to me. Well, I would like to answer that. that. We're having lunch tomorrow. I'd like, uh -huh. I'd like to look at that. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, actually. Because yeah. I think they're doing this crazy stuff. And oh, okay. But it's like an elevator thing, right? It's like, oh, look at that. I know, and I'm creating some lines. I saw a video about a year ago. What's our. Oh really? I used to get those all the time when I used to blue when I used to get a lesson. Oh, like Have you ever seen one of those? Um, <laughs> That's a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come along like, because I I don't understand exactly what you're talking about. Okay, that's really like, 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 Should we ask him now? Why do you really need to do that? That's good stuff. Or like, you know, going down a rabbit hole. That would be kind of complicated. Well, yeah, they get all kind of on the side thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so if, if I had so that article, or that go back a second. I'm going to take a picture of Susan. I might Up ask the them if they, we can look at it or yep. well, say I'll look at it later. Right there. Go down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we can but I'll no, do that. Just go down. It depends like, on how much time I do have to engage with them on this. That's good. And, and also, yeah. probably yeah, right whether there. or not they're confident or they're seen about trying to close the company all over the place. Well, yeah. It's not like you get the offense. No. This is just this article just came out. More. I don't think I've seen any of it. No, no. Oh. Never, never. It's me <laughs> feels free. Yeah, I'm like, did you already say? Go all the way to the Here. end of the article. But before you saw it. that, before you saw that video, what did you think had caused it? And the rest of this. So it's not you saying the video was wrong, I but hopefully know. it's going through there. Somebody did that like three times to themselves. Maybe. <laughs> no, that's an experiment they did. With oh, that's with right. That's oh, right. yeah. 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 And make a child and burn them three times for science. <laughs> Maybe that would get them to the point of them coming to another conclusion. Oh. Yeah, that that last paragraph. Saw that video. What is what is the The exchange reflects yeah. our differing philosophies and an issue with communication. Yeah, yeah. But the sentence I really particularly mm -hmm. like is like one thing. Yeah. Any other? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Like many people in the UFO community, yeah. and you can replace UFO community with any other. Pseudo community that you want to think of. He sees the debunking of an individual case as um, resembling an attack on a broader argument. And which is what I had to a friend. If you say, well, I know that she was a scientist, blah, 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 blah. They think you're attacking the whole went down the and they they then they they shift over from talking about whatever they're talking about to being defensive about our position. You know, and she was immersed in it. But yeah, so you know what this reminds me of is the great office relationship. You know, that came up in the video actually. Somebody because after yeah. the after the video, been, which is the, the his vaccine, part of it's really it's short, short, then it goes to has been really frustrating for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm a molecular uh, biologist. Uh, so no, no, so no, like, I understand how, how this works and every single step. There's almost no idea. very they and, uh, you know, I had some people like, oh, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> in a board. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going to start coming back. What was that? Finish your sentence. But actually, I was just reading oh, my book about it. No, no. I watched a five minute YouTube video. Where we were like, oh, we yeah. can't believe anything. Yeah, I believe eight percent of the time. And I'm like, then I can't. I have one person reality. Okay, so we're coming back. So, the goal of this workshop and the workshops that we have coming up are all to become the person people come to when they have questions about weird things. And that's another thing that Brian Dunning says a lot is that this conversation you're having right now with this person, if you approach them with honesty and you approach them with not like rolling your eyes and telling them they're an idiot, they're more likely to come to you with the questions that are probably a little more dangerous 
is this person in immediate harm for this belief? So if you have a conversation with them respectfully and they can, and you can get somewhere with them, even if they don't completely believe you when you're done, they're more likely to come to you with the harder questions. So that's the goal. How do you become that person that people will come to when they have questions about weird things? So give me some feedback. Would you guys tell your person, what were the do's? But you told the person when they told you this story that they seen this thing about UFOs and hair dryers. Who wants to start? Don't rush me. All right, Ben. Like we can ask about uh, them to send us the video they saw. Excellent. Because you, it's hard to debunk something. And we said before, you want to be respectful if you just out of hand say that's nonsense. But you haven't even seen the video. So let's see what the video is. That's really good. What else we got? Don't hit me all at once with all your, oh my God, it's so much feedback. Okay, Karen. Well, to say that's interesting. And what did you think it was before we found out that it could be alien? And because that was inspired by what you said about letting them come to a conclusion. So maybe they would say, well, at first I thought it could be this or that or this, but when I saw this, I realized it but at least they'll get them thinking that they had wondered, oh, did I burn myself? Did my kid mark on me? I mean, hopefully they had some thoughts like that. How many of you guys thought of taking the person, pushing them on the ground, putting your foot over the top and taking a hairdryer and <laughs> see if it showed up? So let's, let's see how long that burn shows. No, I, I don't think it's a good idea. But I thought I'm lying and <laughs> saying, oh, I had something like that once when I burned myself with a hairdryer. <laughs> Gosh, I look just like the hair dryer burn I got. Wow. <laughs> oh, and I've done it multiple times. And then this, you can kind of see there's three on there. And like Ben said, that's a drawing with pen. They were just trying to draw it. I mean, you know, you could take one for the team. And in, in, in the article that um, Mick does, as he goes and he burns himself, or he burns, he does some, first he measures Mr. Scientist, you know, he measures the, the heat of the displacement from the burn yeah. of the you put a thermo something or other in the hair dryer. Like you know, we all have hot. thermal things around the house, right? Of he course. Does. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he measured that and he says, okay, well, that what would it cost? What would it be for the burn? And it was seven burn ratio to the I mean, he even did it in metric what temperature. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, we love you, Nick, if you're watching this. So so <laughs> right. So okay. What else did what else did you say to your friend? Group get, group get two. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, we have to have do only. I, well, I, I think you asked yeah. questions. Well, just like the other group, I would say, well, I'm not really gonna say to you. I want me, I'm not that familiar with what you're talking about. What is more likely is always our favorite one. Yeah, what is most likely that aliens came down and they're following you in a car and and you never heard from them again. And nobody well, maybe else you saw do. Them that, you don't want to go into that. They might oh. go that. <laughs> and what about whenever they say, well, you know, it's mostly women, but some men have it too. You have to say, well, well what do these women have in common? What's, so what's the wand of the man working <laughs> <laughs> Oh, someone said, was it you, Tyson? That said, is this happening to any bald men and Chinese bald men? <laughs> we want to talk about where they might be using that hairdryer. <laughs> and yeah, would that be a better target if you were to get lasers? So why is it women? Why is it women? Why is it only women? Almost yeah. only women. What do you mean by almost only? Because if you write that in the article, it's almost like if he brings it out in the lecture, it almost makes it sound like that is an anomaly. It isn't like 45 to 55 percent it's probably like 90 to 10 or something you know how why why is it a big deal that you've mentioned that it is a woman thing not a man thing what do, what do women have different than men and well they tend to be more hysterical <laughs> <laughs> oh, hysterical women who give birth it's and... just a bunch of sexist french people <laughs> <laughs> yeah because giving birth isn't a big deal at all that's <laughs> so uh... targeting for their breeding <laughs> 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 It's the aliens targeting for their breeding program. <laughs> this is the Which women one. can have, Somebody in the comments, and Deborah was saying, because this guy, he gives his talk, if you can stand it for about 15 minutes, and then it's Q&A, and 
you're thinking, okay, great. Somebody's going to get up and give them some really reasonable things. One of them somebody said was um, that woman. Uh, she said it was. Go ahead, Deborah. You're being tagged for some reason. Oh yeah, yeah. Aliens are tagging you. Like I guess you would do beef or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this she person was... had this vaccine, so we're going to give them this mark. Earth grade double A. <laughs> <laughs> we can laugh here. We can laugh here. Yeah, that, that woman was so far down the rabbit hole. It wasn't funny, and even he kind of. He was just kind of like, oh, okay. Well, you know. <laughs> he and didn't the, argue with her, but you could tell he was like, and Cindy said, way further what along. did you have to do with maybe crop circles? And that was another one that came up to the yeah. They were like, they were asking the man, they said, you know, what, what about crop circles? Does this have something to do with crop circles? This is all stuff we thought was debunked years ago, probably, and that nobody believes in still, but oh, apparently they do. Yeah, Richard? Um, I had a Facebook friend who would, in real life was, Kind of a friend acquaintance, and uh, he somebody was talking about another friend on Facebook was talking about chem uh, chemtrails, uh, and so I was kind of going into a rebuttal with her about you know well these are not chemtrails they're contrails you know with condensation, and so he piped up, and so I started going back and forth with him. Um, and it got to the point where I asked him, I said, well, where did you hear this from? Who did you hear this from? He said, my dad. And he was in the Air Force. Da, 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 da. And he just kind of went off. Are you calling my dad a liar? Yeah. So, <laughs> I realized at that point I was a deep shit. That's so, <laughs> to walk away. He unfriended me. We're still, you know, friends. We're just not on uh, Facebook. It's exactly. it's funny. It's uh, these people actually believe the thing and they're defensive about it, but but there there's the doubts they're holding back. They're, it's it's there. They have these doubts about it, and they're defensive about that. When you when you touch on the doubt part, sometimes they're giving you their best evidence in the hopes that maybe you will explain it. Yeah, to yeah, some yeah. extent, or at least give them some kind of something to think about. Uh, Deborah, you said something earlier about. At the bottom of this article, and I, I'm going to bring this up here. Let me, I'll just bring it up here right now. So, Mick West has debunked it. I mean, it is debunked. He talked, I think he talked to the guy. Um, I can't remember if that was uh, Jacques, Jacques oh, okay. Vallet. Um, I think he did. And he said, Well, if you know that you have, if you know that hair dryers cause these burn, why are you continuing to push the theory? That's what he said to Jacques. Mark would say to sell books, right? <laughs> of course. And what Jock's answer is, is that when he sees a story and it is totally hairdryer related, he removes it from his website and he continues with the others because he, if he thinks that if he, if he says, well, that's a hairdryer mm -hmm. and that's a hairdryer and that's a hairdryer, but we don't know about these other five, but those three are, let's push them to the side. Those are hairdryer related. These over here, We'll leave them on the website because if I remove them, then it's like saying nobody will want to come forward with their story. And also, we might get in another movie deal. Another movie deal. Yeah, he's got another movie deal. In the well, show. he's got a good point in, in that way. I mean, if he wants people to keep bringing him in, you know, their experiences. And if he if he poo poos what they're saying, oh, that's a hair dryer, that's a hair dryer. Other people are going to go, oh, he's just going to say it's a hair dryer, so I'm not going to Yeah, but why does he want? So, why what? does he want? Does he want? No, because it's the attention so, economy. Yeah. He wants people to come to his website. But why that particular one? Because everyone wants. Um, I mean, that's a question I, I wouldn't ask. Well, why do you want all these netball stories that are so easy? Well, you just no, no, that's right. right. <laughs> We're using two words. You know? two words. I have a technical <laughs> question. I'm yes. wondering if since we've switched devices, if the Zoom, the system, the Zoom system is still recording and capturing all this good conversation. Yes, yes I believe because it is. Because it's not on the screen. Mm -hmm. The Zoom is. is not attached to what's on the screen. But so it's separate. The Zoom, I'm locked in. Right. The, the Zoom feed is not on your laptop. 
it's it's here at the library. So I just want to make sure it's still capturing our conversation. Yeah, so that's going there. Yay. Okay, good. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you, Karen, for asking because otherwise we'd have to reenact the whole thing no. <laughs> in the last 10 minutes. And I will burn you. <laughs> you burn me with the hair dryer when we get home. So here's a question I have for you guys. We're doing really good on time. Thank right? you, Karen. We're running out. I was no, I'm about doing that. really good on time. Okay, so, so he's debunked it, right? For all purposes, this is pretty well debunked. Uh, if you tell your friend, now I have this article. Okay, I went home, I looked at your video. It's a good looking guy, great accent, gray hair, looks great. And then I did some Googling and I found this article by Mick West. And I found out this site called Metabunk. And I saw all these things that they're doing on there with the burns, okay? So he's really debunked it. He's over debunked it. Now I want you to have that conversation. What does the conversation look like now that you've had, you've read, you've watched the video, you've got some, you've uh, done your research, and now your friend is like, it's the next day at work, and you're like, hey, at lunch today, I want to talk to you about that video because I looked it up. That was really interesting. Thanks for sharing that with me. Now what? So go to your groups, give us the next answer. I suppose. And then, like, and then that's simply like the next step. Oh, since you have a, pu uh, a putative I'm explanation, sure you can go like, um, I've seen an article that says okay. these burns could be caused, so these debunked. could be burns from hair dye. Yeah. If you have a hair dryer, mm -hmm. the before yeah, match you know, your mark. Or the only thing I can do is kind of on appliance. Yeah. Ask them if they have what's in your mind about anything. Thank you. I am curious. So I actually know it's something. We don't really know what we read it. What all the time that's video today. We don't know what all of my article tomorrow. What would it take for you to believe? You know, other than some mysterious cause, what would it take you for an ice cream with a hair dryer? So, you know, get them to go down that kind of investigation kind of path. Yeah. Oh, like call one of those people would, like they have a cartoon. And we go, well, they come in a way. I might have a long stick with a neck. Well, you know, like, oh, don't hurt yourself. But, you know. People that are totally delusional about um, something like that. Them I them don't think that they would have a meal. Yeah, how do they manage that? There's one thing that they would solve it. Riddle. No, think, but it's important for people to think it's like anyway. it's like that well, type I, I, of illusion is willful of us. Yeah, on their part, like, an escape is kind of an escape is like this. So it's, it's really something they have to do. Yeah. Not do it, <laughs> but, but I think that's a good question to ask people in general, even if it doesn't lead to them. Checking. Okay, so you read that article. Not read the article. Just the article. I read it. I mean, you see. You can see. Think about it. Think that. Okay, if I believe, you know. I mean, I think it's always worth. Somehow, I always think things about. So based on family members. But also, what you did say, I think it is important to evaluate them directly with their therapy. What is like? I watched your video. I watched your video. But I also we show or something. I I always thought that was great. But what what if what if it's not? Because sometimes it's just kids threatened and they're not there yet. They're not ready. Right. But I I just think it's good for people skeptical hygiene to have that in their mind. In the back of their mind, anytime they encounter new information, and maybe also nation from a co worker or a friend, or it's just somebody who's just too. Well, not what we're just going to let him witness this. Like, well, not in that not the mission. Yeah, I'm not going to always talk about the thing that is other stuff. I mean, because I'm, I mean, I watch so many of the sites and I see people, but in the natural world, it's kind of a relationship like basic compared to people to think, okay, but you can see a lot. They are questioning it. 
so invested in that. Yeah. Yeah. And why people buy this is that it's getting some need for them, like right. John. And it could shake them up. I think it's yeah. Yeah. great also that you don't have to convince yeah. them that they're wrong. <laughs> you get so I'll get you started on the to question. That if I would, right? like, how invested is the person? Yeah, because some of them, and how invested are you in them? How much air that they let go of that belief? Right, if, right. Well, yeah, because maybe they yeah, are um, um, art blocked out. Yeah, because <laughs> I was listening to this. We don't want any. It's all in the second video. Yeah, I was listening to the interview on the radio, and the guy being interviewed is one of the parents of the same. He's like, he looks like a wearing a hat in a bar with his Alex Jones hat. I don't know. He's not got his support, but he's just in the little bat. And the guy got so bad. Thank goodness you are not a candle person. You're just not. I'm forgetting my file off. I mean, kind of. I think I thought you were old. What's I know? I uh, maybe I thought. Are you going to come to your hotel? I may have thought that point. I think yeah. Yeah, but then, if someone had um, back in their teeth, really, or something negative, the, or the guy left the bar, and, and then he came all yeah. to all of them, he was down in their head. That dad, yeah. yeah. you just tell people to be The day I realized this guy came to see me watching through the lobby, toilet paper on their shoes, just tell them everybody wanted to be free. American, so wrong. We don't really do give an answer. We encourage them to be gently walk like all the way down the rabbit hole. Yeah, but but it's like a whole hamster. They're like a little crowded down there. Somebody can go for a hole or between the stairway, the hole or everybody get into their holes. Or those more more room. Yeah, I did watch you. Okay, Alex, Alex, I wonder. That's where I remember. You had to go and give the evidence, and I was thinking about how cool it is about rabbit hole. Okay. Good job. Good job, you guys. Let's hear what you guys had to say. Who wants to volunteer what they had to say? Sum it up. Nobody. Come on now. Uh, it, good at it. Go ahead, Ben. We so to? acknowledge you that you engaged with their media. So go like, I watched the video. Uh, and then go like, I looked a bit more. I found Attention. The library will be closing in 30 minutes. The oh. second floor will be closing in 15 minutes. The study rooms are now closed. Thank you. Atención. La biblioteca va a cerrar en 30 minutos. El segundo piso va a cerrar en 15 minutos. So probably like about every 10 minutes. Yes, I want to hear what Ben was saying. I know, but I'm waiting for it to finish. Okay, okay go ahead. Uh, and, and then you, you can uh, offer the article that you found about debunking the video. And then maybe you can suggest that they investigate a little bit more on their own. So you go like, hey, uh, do you have a hair dryer for us? Are you going to go online and, and go to Amazon and find him that has the circle marks or whatever? And you go, okay, here, here's your hair dryer. Go home. They're probably first. Awesome. Well, well, if, they, if they have the mark, they have one. Right. So ask them to maybe investigate. Try it again. Yeah, it seems like you could do it. On I, I would just day. add one thing to what you said, and this is something Susan and I come up against all the time, and we're really trying to change the mindset. You know, don't use the word debunk, yeah, because it puts you in the camp that says you've already made up your mind. But if you said understand or investigate or investigate it, so you instead of saying that's already been debunked, you, you would say, well, how do you understand that? And then it puts it in their court and they have to like say it and it keeps the conversation going. As soon as you say debunk, people are like, I don't like you anymore. That was it, it's just, just the three, the like acknowledge you saw their thing, pre present your own evidence and then offer them a route to explore more. Not them. burning themselves up, probably not a good idea. No, <laughs> unless they decide to. You know. tell them about what they did. You know, put ink on what on your article over here. Oh yeah, yeah. Of your hair dryer, dryer and then touch it to yourself and see yeah. yeah. how it looks. See what shape it makes. Yeah, right. Like did that match your burn? Just <laughs> how does that look? What's wrong for you when you dry your hair? <laughs> <laughs> but then I was wondering how. Well, I think we were wondering. Because um, Richard brought this up first. How involved do you want to get in, in talking to him about this um, belief? Because some people are really invested 
in these strange beliefs and it's like um, if you say anything at all to them about why it's not correct even if you're nice about it they you can they can go off on it and play like religion which is basically a cult yeah and you know they, they really get defensive if you see that they're really really invested in it some for some reason walk away yeah, yeah. walk yeah. away save the yeah. friendship save but it. there's a spectrum of uh, of people right so some that are just delighted to find out it has something to do with aliens because they kind of want this well, they want all of this think how special that would be right oh, yeah you know, it's, it's the sense of belonging <laughs> you know and specialness and whatever and then there's some people that maybe legitimately just were wondering and haven't thought about it and they just kind of are it's lazy thinking it's like oh i googled this i found this there's the answer a lot of people want simple answers. They're very lazy thinkers. So those people can be saved by the law of saved is the wrong word, but uh, <laughs> illuminated with reality um, if they're given a little help to find the, the reality. Yeah, that's what we're saying. We had to gauge how invested is this person? Yeah. Are they mainly like a lazy <laughs> thinker and they're willing to consider the, the opposite? Yeah. Of, what, of what they believed in yeah. or are they so invested that just a little bit of disagreement that person's going to go off and get really obnoxious and angry mm -hmm. not only that but if they if they seem really invested in it there's probably other things are going on <laughs> one, one technique that, with, I, yeah. that I used when I was a service manager that worked very well is, is when people had complaints about their car or beliefs uh, incorrect beliefs about their car. I would not get defensive. I would just give them the impression that <clears throat> we're, we should check, you know, I should check into this, or we should check into it. And we would sort of, type, you know, stand together and look at the car as this is where the focus is. So you're, you're an investigator and you're sort of a partner. So okay. you get, you build some trust and you're you know you're looking you're looking into it i i think it's a big mistake to offer defense right immediately yeah uh, because you're going to turn off you don't want to argue with the person about <clears throat> they're going to right them, you know. remember what the ultimate goal is become the person people come to when you they have questions about weird things that's our ultimate goal is to push them back a little bit but not <clears> to <throat> such extent that like okay i've debunked it you're an idiot let's move on it's a hair dryer get over it dude <laughs> Go home, burn yourself, see what it is, see how long it takes to heal, see how long it takes to bear. We're done. So that's the technique. So I want to just on the last little thing that we're gonna, I want to talk about is debunking versus pre-bunking. And this is going to be kind of the thing for all free workshops. The idea of if you walk in with the here's your answer, like that. Now let's go, you know, let's talk about something else. Um, and here's your answer, and everything you know is done. <laughs> versus you know it's important to have these kind of articles out because you never know who's going to find them and you never know where it's going to lead with the conversation there's some strange things out there trust me but what is the what is it about um pre-bunking what are you learning today about this idea of pre-bunking there's a kiwi in, kiwi in my pocket uh, <laughs> oh, everybody carries a kiwi in their pocket right so <laughs> you lost me there. <laughs> Draw. <laughs> Draw. <laughs> so what is it? So about the thought, just take a couple minutes talking to your group about pre-bunking versus debunking. The idea that you have a pre-bunking versus debunking, and then we're gonna be we're basically done. So do that real quick. <sighs> I'm not familiar really with the term pre-bunking. So, there's I, I it's something like some so it's an interaction I have with my mom. It's, so my, I'm putting my mom knows that I'm working well. So she'll, she'll, she'll lose me. She'll send me things. She'll go like, this well, thing said that it said. can remove toxins. After the fact, it's too young. When I step in in something like that, I, I like to offer her tools call. that she can Critical use in the future to try to detect so that that kind of thing. So yeah, well, about generally yeah. things that refer to the top. If you have opportunity, what would that look like? Yeah, if you have opportunity to speak with that, like.
Well, and also most toxins. Like said, yeah, if your, your body doesn't get rid of it on its own, uh, some some random extract and is not going to remove it from your body. So I, I think debunking is kind of like helping people develop like a little thing but to model good rational thinking around well, topics without accusing them of, of believing what it. I try and model. Well, I heard about that. Too. And actually, improv has so helped with it. It started doing wind stuff online during the COVID that locked out or whatever the water. But when you stay at home, you know, just kind of like so much fun. An investigative uh, mode and get and them. What I'm doing is encourage practice and question or even me in that way instead of just declaring that this is whatever it is. Yeah, so you're just or, I mean, them. Yeah. 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 not. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I'm not arguing about it, also showing the information I have so far. I believe it's this. Yeah. Then yeah. Only I could, you know, that is that look into my thing. thing. So I'm just kind of trying to be that kind of person. You have a warm day, a real strong reaction. They were going to be exposed to crazy yeah. gear. That probably yeah. didn't. Yeah. Oh, I just didn't believe. So, so I think the woman might need to get more, more. And then she had to be gone. More effective. Sold her business. You get the mother right to school. Oh, everything's more effective. But I think she had a lot of They're buying the all head inside of us. We exposed the little gear. But you, you know, there may be a little encounter. Some new weird idea. Yeah, I, I didn't take it seriously. Both go, you know, you know like she's thinking about, about it. Thinking about it. Though. Like, you know, I'm like, like looking at everyone. Like, like maybe you're seeing with me. Are you on Earth with me? <laughs> watching TV and something comes on the news about some weird event, um, and you're like, oh wow, what do you think? How do you think that happening? You know, give it a people yeah, question how that. you would look at it and how you might investigate it, I mean, and then I guess the main thing I would think, think of with pre-function is not just so it's not just Something that's established about once or they're going to believe the weirdest thing they could possibly They've been a little bit inoculated um, into a way of, of approaching like it. And, you know, they, you can't insist that they do that. Science, but the they that we can demonstrate it and model it. And and we can try it. Another adult. Even if they're older than a lot. But we want to encourage They have to. Well, that's less and less now. Okay, so wrap up your thought. We're going to discuss. Affecting your life the more you want to challenge it. I forgot where we should. Okay, okay, so what were your thoughts on pre bunking versus debunking? Oh. I didn't define it really well because I kind of wanted you guys to come up with your ideas of what this idea of inoculating people would look like. In this case, how how do you feel about your your fictional persons now? Do you feel like you've given them enough information to? What? Tell me what you're talking about. Give them enough rope to hang on. It's the only thing that I mean, you know, that's kind of what an, uh, free bunking is. I mean, it's not about proving them wrong and making them look like an idiot. You can silently think that in your brain, but we shouldn't be trying to do that. You should be trying to figure out how to no, get them to course, think. That, that's an excuse clearly. to use, but the point is you, you give them some slack and you just let that sink in. Leave them alone. Yeah, well, maybe some like a online romance or something. Yeah, uh, you know, you listen to the whole story about you know where they how they met and so on, and then uh, you say, "Well, good for you. I hope that works out." But whatever you do, don't send any money. <laughs> Too late. You know, <laughs> no. Or gift Skip. cards. Gift cards, like you said. Yeah, or, or that's not money. Gift because that's <laughs> that's untraceable. Money. Yeah, it is untraceable. So, so um, that's what the crooks want is money. And yeah. so you just go to the end game and just say, don't do this. Otherwise, fine. Good luck. All right. And I like Karen's idea earlier of making lying, maybe lying a little bit and saying, giving them a fictional. I had a friend who had the same, something very similar to this happen to them. And here's what they told me that they learned when they got done with, you know, whatever it was. Romance scam, hair dryers, whatever. You know, I had a friend that had that kind of thing happen, and she went to her doctor, and she told, and the doctor said, "You know what? That looks a lot like a curling iron burn, and or whatever, you a know, burn, period. yeah, a burn of some sort." And then they go, "Yeah, I you know, so maybe they'll come up, maybe that's there." Any other ideas, uh, thoughts about pre-bunking versus debunking? 
um, try, try to offer them like tools that they can use in the future when they come across, you know, things that make dubious claims. Uh, I gave an example where like my mom will uh, ask me about dietary supplements and they're like, it removes toxins. And I'm like, mom, generally if something refers to toxins, they're being vague because there is no, you know, it you know, doesn't do anything. Um, well, yeah. Our so, liver removes toxins. If it can, then we get sick. Good point. That's a very succinct way. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's like I mean, the liver's a pore. Yeah. yeah. Your body will remove toxins on its own, and if it can't, I don't think uh, your echinacea will remove those. <laughs> yeah, I told a friend one time I was saying something about doing a cleanse because of toxins. I said, if you had toxins, you'd be sick. <laughs> well, they do sort of feel bad. I've got yeah, like yeah. allergies and stuff. Yeah. Right. Maybe it's just mild. So, okay. Remember, right. the whole goal is to yeah. have the person people want to come to whenever they have a question about something weird. That's what that's what I was going to say. I kept coming back to the assignment because I wanted to go down the rabbit hole of my frustration over my good friend. I lost a Q and I, I kept saying, okay, no, the assignment is let's do this. Let's do this. Become the person people come to with weird things. So I've noticed something I've started doing more is saying things that I used to just think to try and model it to other people. Um, well, this and that, hey, and I encourage, you know, I always encourage more information because if I'm correct, it will withstand scrutiny. And if I'm wrong, I want to know the new information that will help me have a better conclusion. I'm saying things like that more and modeling it and being open to it myself uh, in weird ways, like in meetings, when I'm facilitating meetings, it's becoming part of my vernacular to kind of say things like that. Uh, but it comes out of that. And modeling, modeling it with, with your friends. Yeah. So to show them how you do it. And, and, you know, you don't have to beat them over the head and say, you should do it like this. You just, you do it. And then they'll see you do it. Just make eye statements about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just wonder how many friends were lost over people like Trump. And, oh God, and, it's it's been awful. It's, I I follow that, and it's you may never know. There are a lot of people just having Christmas alone. Put it that way. They're not able to go to any and, and Thanksgiving. All all those things. I just saw one. Attention. Uh, the library will be closing. In I saw an advice minutes. column. Just to read it you the other day. The floor is so now closed. They were writing to the advice on how they solved Sabemos this problem that's going on in Trump stuff. And and all they went to Thanksgiving. Yeah, One it. family member is a prosecutor prosecuting January 6 people. <laughs> and the other person is the mother who's a big Trump fan. So what ended up happening is how they found togetherness. And they had a common purpose is somebody at the table had a flu bug and threw up all over the table. <laughs> Everybody cleaned it up together oh and they all God. got, they had a common purpose and it just, everybody forgot about the fact that there's these differences in their, in their, <laughs> in their life. So I'm just going to give you these last uh, websites really quick if you're interested. So we're going to be doing a series of this. Were, okay. Not Jacques. This is this, this is the book by Nick West. He also has a podcast. It's, not the same name. I think it's. Uh, oh, he's doing pretty well there. He's doing what's the time tunnel? No, it's it's like escaping the rabbit hole, but it's something like that. Anyway, it's easy to find on podcasts. Really interesting. He interviews people who have been in the rabbit hole and how they get out, how they've gotten themselves out. Really interesting. But this is his book and uh, the Skeptoid podcast. I use this a lot in in um, by giving you a couple examples. This is a podcast. It's about 15 or 20 minutes long, but if you don't like podcasts, there each one of these comes with um, uh, the transcript. So you could go and you can actually read read the articles if you want. It's got like, I don't know, 600 of these. Oh, 865. The, so those are really interesting. And the other thing I mentioned, and it's the supporter, the person, this is the group that I'm kind of work, more or less working for as an ambassador uh, to try to bring people back to coming back to doing more social things becoming more active because during the pandemic <laughs> all the skeptic groups died there's only a few that stayed so um center for inquiry i mainly am associated with the center for skeptical inquiry because i'm more interested in the side of of uh, the that side the i like vampires ghosts and all that stuff that's my end so i'm more interested in that and less on the religion side but center for inquiry is another site you might want to might want to check out they do um 
um, they do have two magazines. I do have a bunch of magazines for you to take today if you get them quick. They're skeptical inquiry magazines. And they also have a humanist magazine and they also have a free inquiry magazine. So that gives you some idea. Um, the next workshop we're going to have is in the same place, same time, same back channel. It's um, here, same time, seven, uh, two o'clock, whatever time it is, what it is right now. Oops, I'm going over here to this screen. And this is our workshops. Um, and down here, you're going to see what we're going to do. And this is going to be continuing the conversation a little bit more, but we're going to use the examples of the Mandela effect. If you don't know what this is, I'm, I'm worried about having you guys read about it too much because it's so interesting and it's a memory thing. And uh, we'll be talking about this again. And then you will like Yeah, that's true. The Mandela effect. You can read the Wikipedia page. And then the last one that we're doing on the 21st, I have not decided what we're going to do yet it, because uh, this is still so new to me and it's still too new to the whole, um, to what we're trying to do with these workshops. But so it's uh, a few minutes before they close up. They want us out of here by four. So if you, if you guys are going to come over to Michael's and have Mexican food with me, hands up anybody who's going to go. What's with the address? It's uh, it's an old town. The two uh, it's it's two a two o'clock old town. Old town, two, old town right two, now is being two, closed two. up because of the fair that's there, everyday food mart, food uh, farmers market. Yeah, so they're closing up right now. If even they even had it today. So if if you so park on Monterey Street. Yeah, park on Monterey Street on that parking lot behind. Um, it used to be called Off Main. And you can just walk. Through. Yeah, it's a small Mexican restaurant. It's good food. The prices are are really reasonable considering how the costs of things are. Uh, it's Mexican food. They'll do checks, you know, separate, and the people are friendly and they're great. And probably be a new waitress today. Yeah, they'll probably have a new waitress today. So if anybody else wants to go, we're going to go there right after this, after we clean this up, and we'll do this again next week. I hope you guys all show up again and give me all your feedback whenever we go to the restaurant. Because right now I want you to come up and pick up your Pick up all the swag that you possibly can carry and any of the candy you want. And so we do read the case study because you said you had yeah, to go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Okay. And so thank you guys for showing up. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm reading too. I don't have the answers to all these things. I'm just here to facilitate. I, the Michaels is on Main Street. It's on Main Street. The road the road right now. Right across from uh, Dick Brun. But she's not. She's from Texas. What I was. So the road you're on right here. This is this is Main Street. I love it. So you're gonna go down Main Street. Main Street. Turns into a one way, so you have to loop around and and then come back and then if you wait, validation. Yeah, it'll show you. Connection to the whole restaurant is really nice. And so I like it. Good respect. And so I'm going to have to remember that. A race. Okay, grab them by the shoulders and shake it. does not work. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Where do you, um, where, where do you work as a scientist? Uh, here, I, think I work at a seed company. Uh, no, I've got one right here. It's right here. No, it's right. It's this thing. Basically a doctor. Oh, special. Dr. C. Yeah, they, they, they get seeds that. Uh, Make them better, time. please. Make them better. <laughs> and, How do I turn off the Zoom, Karen? Can you oh, turn it off yes, in there? I will. Oh, I, I, see the, I have to see the screen. Shutting down. Oh, well. Uh -huh. Can I turn off over here? Yeah, there. I think yeah. you're just shutting down there. Make these seeds better. <laughs> yeah. It, and then we're like, uh, it appears that you boiled these. Uh, good luck. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they, they do all sorts of dumb stuff. So this is really perfectly good seeds. These are theirs. Yeah. These Those are mine. Are it's like, well, okay, you're well, going to have to figure out how to throw away uh, your 10 tons of mustard. <laughs> <laughs> Not they'll just come in and they'll see my Zoom and they can. Oh, they can, it's still yeah, it's still going. Can you pull up the right. Zoom screen on that? I don't know. Yeah, there you go. So I can stop. Yeah, this is news to me. Then I can do it at home, no problem. Yay! Hey, everybody. Bye, everybody.